Alright guys, this is a long plane review for Kane on the Amstrad CPC, released by Mastertronic in 1986. So you could have bought this on budget for a measly £2 and I think you would have been very happy with your pocket money purchase. Clearly many of you, including myself, have very fond memories of this game. Now this was originally a Commodore 64 game, then ported to the Amstrad, Speccy, BBC Micro, Acorn Electron and Commodore 16 Plus 4. But the latter three versions though are missing the horse riding sections of levels 2 and 4, meaning they only have two levels of shooting action. Uh, oh look at this loading screen, that is really nice, I like that. And here we are on the title screen, got some very lovely music. And a nice logo there, and presentation is all round very, very good so far. And uh, if we have a little read of the manual very quickly, apparently Kane is an all-action, thrill-packed arcade game in four episodes, where you take the role of Sheriff in a bid to make peace with the Indians. Superb music and realistic sound effects are strongly featured in this addictive game. And there we go. So the original Commodore 64 version was done by John Darnell, you can see his name here, and converted to the Amstrad by Simon Freeman. More on him in a little bit. And we're going to kick things off here with level 1 of 4. Now on stage 1, we have to shoot down birds to trade with the Indians for peace tokens. Each peace token will give you an extra life on further levels. At least one peace token is needed to progress to the second level. And I think it's about three or four birds you have to uh, kill, unfortunately. <laughs> Poor birdies. Don't like killing animals in games, but there we go. It is the Wild West. Uh, I think it's three or four birds we need to kill. Let's get the peace token. Yes, it's three. Three of them. And, and when you actually kill a bird, you get an arrow back uh, uh, given back to you. So you've got the arrows at the top of the screen there in the middle. When you run out of arrows, it's the end of the level. And you need to have at least one of those yellow peace tokens you see there just underneath the killed text there. Uh, we've now got two. And that, mean, that gives us two lives uh, for the rest of the game. Now, so as I said, there's four levels. And then uh, so you've got those two lives for those four levels. Um, to carry through. Um, after the fourth level, it loops around to this level again. Um, but there's three levels of difficulty, so basically three loops. Uh, and on the fourth loop, it'll just be the same as the third loop. So what we're going to do, guys, on this long play is three loops of the game. But we won't spend too long on this first level, because if I was stupidly accurate, I could probably keep going and going and going for hours. So... Um, that should be enough lives now. In fact, we're going to do this without losing a life. Uh, and that's for all three loops of the game. But very, very lovely graphics here. Uh, whenever you saw the running animation of the main sprite as he came on the screen there, it looked really, really nice. Um, decent sound effects, although limited. And uh, it's all looking pretty good so far. There we go. Not caring about uh, getting every single bird and getting loads of lives. We don't need them. As you can see there, we have no arrows left. We've got to gain one back after killing that poor birdie. <laughs> and that should probably do us for now. Right, stage two. We are now mounted on, uh, on your horse. Ride hard across the desert and jump over the bushes and cacti to reach the next town. Now you can remain uh, at a gallop here, but you can push back on the joystick to reduce your speed to a canter. But it's not needed on this level, but it will be needed on the uh, fourth level. We've got miles counting down at the top there, and a time limit. And we've already reached Kane. It's a very, very short level, uh, fairly easy to be honest. Uh, here, here we are on stage three. Apparently you are ambushed in the town of Kane and must gun down the outlaws to gain more bullets, run to the right of the screen. And this is a fun little shoot -em up level. I like how your character moves and you've got a crosshair with him. So it's a bit like Cabal, but before Cabal came out. And there you go, I just reloaded my gun there, got some more bullets. And I've got bad guys left at the top right of the screen. That's how many you've got to kill. And of course, how many you have killed to the left there. Oops. 
They do fire at you. Um, they get more accurate the longer you take to kill them. I've got one guy left here. And that will do it. And now we can go on to the final stage. Stage four. Mount your horse again and jump all the bushes in a race to get to the front of the train and stop it. Now this is quite difficult because as you saw there right at the start, there was two little bushes and things that were actually quite close together. And you really need to know and memorize when they appear. Now I know that there'll be two here, so I'll slow down to a canter and jump over them one by one. And so this level becomes a bit of a memory test. Um, but we actually beat it very quickly there. <laughs> it's only a few coaches to catch up to the train. And that's the first loop done. And then we come on to the second loop. And we'll get next time round, we get more coaches to uh, catch up to. Um, things that really increase in difficulty to my eyes are on levels one, two and three on the next sort of loops through. Uh, although on the third loop, we will get some really fast moving birds appear. Uh, and that's about it. Level two stays identical. I think level three, the bad guys maybe shoot back, uh, shoot at you a little quicker, but it's kind of hard to tell. But there we go. Um, so let's talk about some things about the game quickly. Uh, like, for example, right, the programmer of this game, uh, the Amstrad version, was Simon Freeman. He converted it from the John Darnell Commodore 64 original. Um, other games he did on the Amstrad, well, he did. Com he worked on Commando for Elite, so that was really, really good. Uh, and Monocle cool Man for Mastertronic. Uh, Psychedelia for a rare foray onto the Amstrad for Llamasoft. Yes, Jeff Minter's Llamasoft, and that only released in the Amstrad. And then lastly, Terminus for also Mastertronic. Uh, I can't see much else from him after these games. Uh, looks like he worked in the industry until 1994, and the most notable release in the 90s was a conversion of New Zealand Story for the Sega Master System, of all things, in 1992. So that's Mr. Simon Freeman, the programmer. I think he's done a very, very good job here. We've got nice smooth scrolling, got really lovely animation on the horse and on the main sprite, and really, really nice music. Um, interestingly, I found sales figures for this game uh, from a website called uh, guter.org, G-U-T-E-R.org. And these are the sales figures from Anthony Guter. Uh, the guy who ran Mastertronic sales and royalty accounting systems from 1985 to 1990. Apparently, Kane sold a whopping 262,829 copies across all formats, making it Mastertronic's 11th best-selling title of all time. Indeed, if we discount budget re-releases of full-price games from Mastertronic, e.g. Ghostbusters and Double Dragon in this case, this puts Kane at the ninth place. So this was the ninth best-selling uh, original game from Mastertronic of all time. There you go. Uh, let's talk about the other versions of the game as we finish uh, loop two and start loop three. Um, the Commodore 64 was the original and has kind of sampled speech, but it's mostly args. Um, now, Zap64 magazine believe that the main sprite uh, was ripped from Impossible Mission. Ooh, tentious there. Um, and it has the same music as the Amstrad, but has uh, Red Indian beats kind of looping on the first level, which is kind of nice. It plays very slightly smoother and faster than the CPC, but there's honestly not much in it. Um, I mean, it has parallax scrolling cacti on these uh, horse levels. And it's arguably the, de the definitive version of Kane, but the CPC runs it a very, very close second place, especially uh, with its nicer colours. And I think the, tra the train sounds a bit better on the Amstrad, personally. Um, the Specky version has horrible, garish colours. It really is a, an eyesore. Um, it has no music. Uh, has poor sound effects and the magazines absolutely hated it at the time. And it has weird nasty clicking noises for the horse. Not, not much else sound effects, but there you go. Uh, but he does play okay and pretty much the same as the Amstrad and Commodore 64, but he's definitely the weaker of the uh, C64 and CPC. Um, 
And as we, we just entered loop three now, the final loop we're going to do. As uh, Watch out here, we actually have um, some faster birds appear on this first level. Okay, we've got three other versions to talk about quickly then. Uh, the BBC Micro. Uh, the music is dreadful <laughs> and it plays throughout. And as mentioned earlier, uh, has no horse riding sections despite it apparently being in the manual. So it only has two levels, this level and the shootout level, level three. Um, the animation on the main sprite is a bit laughable and the shootout level we were just talking about is very, very slow. And uh, just add insult to injury, they misspelt baddies on that screen. A uh, pretty dreadful overall. Uh, as for the Acorn Electron, I'm told it's identical to the BBC Micro version, uh, but I've not seen uh, any footage of this running, sadly. The Commodore 16 Plus 4, again, I've not seen this running, just screenshots. Um, and, and again, like the BBC and Acorn, it's missing the horse levels. But the graphics look kind of nice from still screenshots I've seen. Uh, looking like this is better than the uh, BBC version. Right, there you go. So that's the other versions. I think the um, the Commodore 64 wins, but the Amstrad is a very, very close sec uh, second with the uh, Specky in third place. Um, as for magazine reviews at the time for the Amstrad version, this was reviewed in issue 11 of Amstrad Action in August of 1986, and they really quite liked it a lot, especially the polished and humorous style to it, apparently. Um, they gave the graphics 71%, Sonic 60%, Grab Factor 83%, uh, Stain Power 78%, with an overall AA rating of 80%. It also got the AA Rave Award. There you go. <laughs> so yeah, I kind of pretty, I fairly agree with their review scores there. Um, I might give a bit of a higher mark for the Sonics and graphics. They only gave out uh, 16, 71 percent. I think that's a little unfair. But this is very, very good value for a budget title of the time. Um, you know, it was only one ninety nine, and also this was uh, a nineteen eighty five stroke nineteen eighty six, so very very early days, and a very very high quality early release. And this is rightfully fondly remembered. God, that running guy does look like the mission, Impossible Mission Sprite, a lot. I can see why some magazines thought they uh, ripped it off and nicked it, but that does look nice. And I like the uh, c colors and graphics here on this level. In fact, I like them on all the levels. Right. So here, you, you kind of have to have a memory test of remembering those bushes. So the first two, one, two, um, are small jumps, I call them, or canter jumps. Three, four, fifth bush. After the sixth bush, the seventh bush, we need to do a canter jump, as I call it. Now you can jump now at full speed, but it's harder to time. So that's number seven, number eight. Number nine, number ten is a small bush. We need to do a small jump on. Ten, eleven. Um, I think number twelve is two, but gallop up to it. Now canter, jump. Yes, twelve and thirteen. So I've got those numbers memorised. The bush, the bushes remain the same every time. Fourteen, fifteen, and they start repeating around now. be a small jump here but we should be able to reach the end of the train just there we go and there we go that is cane completed all three loops uh, and then it just loops around again the same difficulty and same number of coaches so there you go guys so very very good game that very very good budget release um and also we've got a mode one and mode naught split there so the top um status bar there is in mode one so a higher resolution lower colors but so we get a nicer more detailed text there and then the main game screen with a split um, is in mode naught for those lovely colorful chunky pixels um, so I like this a lot um, it's not a game that I will come back uh, a lot to um, it's like one of those games you come back for a quick blast and have a laugh with and we'll let the title screen music play out in full this time, and then we'll end things. So as an overall review score, guys, um, I think I'm going to agree with Amstrad Action and give this an 8 out of 10. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty fair. You have to look at things in context, that this is a budget game for 199 
There are full price games that maybe are better than this that are rated lower than eight, but you would have pulled, paid full price for. So context, guys, and also this is very very early days in 1985 and 86. So very impressive stuff. So I like Kane a lot. There you go. So eight out of ten from me. Thank you very very much for watching, guys, and I will hopefully see you all again very very soon. Cheers and goodbye. So thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed that, if you did please click a like below, leave a comment and also subscribe if you haven't already, and over that way there's another video for you to check out. Zypho, out.